Uh, your voice is breaking, sir. Uh, is it fine now? Ah, uh, now it's fine. It's still. Okay. okay. So, so the agenda for uh, today would be the AR module. So we will try to complete the setup, and okay. uh, maybe we will see what are the setups that involved uh, to do the transaction in AR module. Okay. And uh, we will try to create an invoice, and we will try to create a normal invoice, foreign currency invoice. Okay. And we will try to create uh, credit memos and try to see the outstanding of this particular customer. And uh, we also see how to create customer and all those things in uh, Fusion application. And we will uh, create visit and we will try to close the particular invoice. So where we will try to do a partial closure and the full closure. So, so this is the plan for today. So I'm just uh, sharing uh, the, the setup part, so what we will do. So these are the setups uh, basically we will do today. And uh, part of uh, this uh, module, basically we will uh, just a minute. I wanted to just understand, and you even mentioned in the video saying that uh, there is a common reference uh, data set and we have our own uh, reference data set. Is that, yes. uh, is that, am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, yes. And okay. uh, yeah, so this one I wanted to clarify. Okay. Yeah. So basically what is uh, reference uh, data set? So reference data set is something that is used to classify specific uh, setup into a particular budget so that I can use this setup across the business unit. Wherever I want it to happen, I can use it. So here we have two parts. One is common uh, data references and the other is specific to particular uh, BU or particular LU specific uh, reference data set. So common reference data set is given by Oracle where uh, we, we can use as it is. We don't need to do any configuration or any changes. We can use it. So common data reference set will be attached with most of the setup. So if we are going with the common data reference set, so we don't need to create the setup uh, like the payment terms and all those things. We don't need to create it. It will be uh, already attached with this common data reference set. So this is the advantage of using the common uh, data reference set. So why do we need a specific, uh, BU specific uh, data reference set is that uh, it will help us to restrict uh, the setup to a particular business unit. So we, for a practice purpose, maybe we can use this common uh, data reference set or for few business cases, maybe we can use it. But as a standard practice, we will go for uh, the BU specific or LE specific uh, reference data set. So, so this is a basic uh, classification. It will allow us to classify our group a particular setup and use it for the different uh, views. So, the, so this is why we are using this uh, reference data set. Uh, so this is the classification basically. Hmm. Okay. And uh, sir, uh, you even attach reference data set while creating a business unit. That is a basic yes. step that you do. But even again, uh, during the AP uh, setup, I mean, for yes. the payment terms also, you attach the reference data. Yeah. So, uh, for every setup, we have to keep attaching the reference data set, or is it a default which is when you create the business unit when you attach the reference set at that time, it is like a default to all the other modules, or you have to separately uh, attach it when you set up a new module? Yeah, so if we are going business unit specific, we will have to attach for each setup. So, the reason is that. Uh, so this will basically help us to restrict at uh, business unit level. So that if I attach for this particular business unit, then I will not be able to use it for the other business unit. So that is the purpose of this. So that okay. is why we are attaching at every level. Okay, so fine. And uh, sir, one more doubt was in this yeah. off offset uh, seg segments uh, yeah. where you had uh, not enabled it. You had clicked it on none. Uh, yeah. But you said in case if you enable it, it nullifies the balances. You gave an example for the expense. Yeah. 
Yeah, so in the real scenario, suppose if we don't enable that, uh, will the balances not mismatch when the when you generate the reports? Yeah, the end of system the will, I mean, so basically, let's say we, we take and uh, what do you call uh, the, the balancing segment, segment value one and uh, segment value two. So we are doing the intercompany inter transaction between these two. So what this uh, offset will do is that it, it will take this offset for the balancing segment and it will automatically create the uh, the segment two against the segment one. Whereas if we don't enable this particular option, system will use based on the setup what we have given. So it will not uh, offset automatically. So that is the reason now we are using it. Uh, so basically the reason we didn't use it is that we don't want a uh, system to automatically create uh, the, or assign the value set. So that is why we, we gave it as no. Okay. So this is usually a general norm followed by uh, companies. I mean, when you are install, I mean, um, implementing this. This is not general norm. Basically it is uh, client specific. So some clients will need it and uh, some client uh, will prefer to not to enable this option. So could you give an example of uh, people who actually enable this? Uh, um, which which sector, which which business sector? Uh, so maybe we can uh, say there's a kind of, uh, an, uh, uh, so I can say this model where, where we have a centralized uh, payment. So the centralized payment in the sense, uh, let's say we have uh, 40 different uh, or maybe 100 different offices. So out of this 100 different offices, we classify this into branch offices, zonal offices and head offices. So head office is always one and we have maybe 10 uh, zonal offices and the, re the remaining are branch offices. So where branch offices will create only the invoices. They don't have any privileges to make the payment. So for the payment, they will have to send uh, the request to the zonal offices or the head offices, whichever is relevant. So let, let's take to our case, it is only the zonal offices which, which will make this uh, payment and this will, the zonal offices will report to the respective uh, head office. So on this case, what usually we will do is that the liability will be transferred to the zonal offices. So how are we transferring this liability to the zonal offices? So basically while creating the expense, we will say that uh, instead of office one, that is the branch office, we will say office two, this is zonal office. So the liability will be transferred to uh, zonal offices. So when they are making the payment, the liability will be getting knocked, knocked off with the cash clearing account. So this you can you here you can use this offset and we can automatic we can use this automate and uh, we can knock off for this offset. So this is the purpose. So we can use mostly for the centralized uh, payment business case scenarios. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. That's it. Yeah. 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 Any other doubts? Uh, sir, I was actually going through the interview questions of Fusion. They had mentioned something about Oracle Mediator. Uh, what is it, sir? I mean, what is the concept of that? Mediator in the sense, I mean, we have uh, middleware and uh, we have UCM. Uh, I mean, if you can uh, give me the, the exact uh, thing. What they they just mentioned uh, what is Oracle Mediator. That's what, that was one of the questions. I'll, I'll just go through that and I'll just uh, copy that and send it to you, sir, on WhatsApp. Maybe yeah, yeah, tomorrow you can uh, yeah explain that. Yes. Yeah. That's it, sir. I uh, can carry forward. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, fine. So, shall we start? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, I think we have seen uh, the, the setups and I mean today's agenda. So, let's uh, start with the setup part. So, navigate into setup and maintenance. And let me try to get the project what uh, we created on the earlier session.
So this is the first setup that uh, we will have to do in uh, receivable module. So that is uh, receivable system options. So I think we have it already. I'll uh, explain it how it works. Let me create I think we have uh, done the setup. Let me do it. Okay, so this is our raw video. Okay, so the moment we search with our uh, business unit, we will get this. So the first uh, thing what we will have to do is that uh, attach this business unit. So the moment we attach the business unit, automatically the ledger and uh, ledger currency will be populated automatically. And then we have uh, the auto cash uh, rule set. So the auto cash rule set is something that when we are applying this particular transaction or the invoice with the receipt, how do we want to apply this or clear the queues that is pending uh, with us? I mean, pending by customer. So here you can see this will be the first option that what we are seeing is the clear past queue invoices. So this will basically clear the past queues. This is based on the historical transaction where whatever is the uh, I mean the, the past one it will uh, clear so let's say we have three invoices one is maybe 10th of January 5th of January and 1st of January so this will clear uh, starting from 1st of January and then we have uh, clear the account which means clear the account then apply the oldest uh, first so it will again clear the oldest and it will close the particular accounts and then we have uh, invoice match so this will basically match with the invoice and what whichever the invoice we are matching it will clear the particular invoice at a whole and this is like uh, oldest uh, transaction first so you can see here oldest invoice and the credit first so this is also again the the oldest uh, part of invoice will be uh, cleared So this is what about auto cash uh, rule set and then uh, we have uh, auto match uh, rule set so basically auto match rule set is to define that how do we want to match so this is to automate it so let's say we are uh, creating the receipts uh, through automate so basically we have a concept called lockbox so lockbox is something that a commercial bank is given to a privileged uh, customer in order to automate their receipt application for the AL module specifically. So what it will do is like a file will be generated uh, in bank site and bank will send us the file, CSV file basically, and we will load this in a particular uh, SR50 folder and from there we will import it. And based on this file, we will create the receipt and apply the receipt automatically. So for that we will need the auto match rule set. Unless we have this rule, we will not be able to. I mean, system will basically give a validation. So this is what uh, auto ma auto match rule set. And then we have uh, maybe auto apply a receipt. 
so if we wanted to if we if we wanted to reduce the human effort maybe if system wanted to apply it automatically then we can set a limit for it so that system will automatically progress and do it so for that again we will need uh, the rule set to do that so we can uh, have this use auto apply so if we use auto apply then we will have to give the days and then so we restrict have... sorry sorry sir sorry sir restrict yes. the limit meaning sir i i, I didn't get that sir uh, i mean days to to apply you, you just mentioned to restrict some limit you mentioned so i i couldn't get that no restrict to i mean limit in the sense i'm just saying to limit uh, the human efforts that we if we if you wanted to automate this process we can use this setup so that is two things one is automatic rule set so what automatic rule set will do is that basically it will set a matching rule in order to match with the invoice and the receipt so basically we are while we are importing the uh, receipts through this log, uh, log box so basically this rule will set the receipt and uh, the invoice and it will match and it will apply so again uh, from here we have another option days to auto apply a receipt so we have uh, imported the receipt if we don't want to use or give a manual intervention then we can uh, give a limit for this limit in the sense on how many days should this uh, apply on a particular receipt okay okay two so days three days four days mm -hmm. so this is what i was referring okay okay, okay. And then uh, we have uh, write up. So write up is something we, we if we wanted to reduce the balance uh, from uh, customer use. So let's say we have. Uh, so mostly write up will be used for the decimal points. I mean the precision basically. So the customer review is something that uh, maybe thousand point five zero. So we will use this write up to take off this point five zero and uh, similar things. So as a business scenario, we will use mostly write up for this kind of uh, the, the decimal points. And apart from that, we can use this write up for the normal uh, write up also. But whereas we have another concept called chargeback as well, so that we will discuss it later point of time. But basically, write up will reduce the uh, customer payables. Okay. So again, here we have a limit. So the limit is something that <clears throat> from which amount to which amount I can uh, use this write up. So if I give maybe one rupee to 10,000, so below one rupee, I will not be able to write up. About 10,000, I will not be able to write up. Okay. And then uh, we have a uh, refund. So refund is something that uh, we wanted to return back uh, customer the reduce maybe maybe the item uh, is damaged or due to some other reason we wanted to refund the amount to the customer then we will set the minimum amount so below this amount we will not be able to process the refund and then we have uh, chargeback so what is chargeback so chargeback is something that uh, we wanted to close the existing uh, receipt and we wanted to open a new invoice or the new bill for this particular purpose. So let's say I, I purchase uh, an item on 1st of January and today it is uh, maybe 30th of uh, March and I say that let's close this bill and let's open a new bill for this. I'll start a new purchase. So on those kind of scenario, what we will do is we will create and uh, charge back against this particular receipt, whatever is spending. And again, we will match this charge back for creating a new image. So this is what we call charge back. So to make this charge back, how do we want to make it? Whether it is enter date or open uh, invoice due date or the receipt date, or if you wanted to use the deposit date. So mostly we will use either the open or invoice due date or the enter date. Okay. Yes. And and then uh, we have uh, application exemption. So this is like exemption. If you want to have anything 
exempted uh, for applying this uh, reset application that uh, maybe we can use it here. And again, the right of uh, exemption and uh, the, the, so this, these are all kind of an exemption part basically. And then but these can, are all not mandatory, no, the? no, not mandatory. And this is optional. So okay. exception will be always uh, a non-mandatory thing. Okay. okay. So then we have uh, the the realized uh, again. I mean, basically the accounting part of it. So this involves the currency. So realized uh, gain and uh, realized uh, loss will be calculated based on the the foreign currency value and this thing. So it will calculate us whether it is uh, gain or loss. So here we have uh, two things. One is uh, realized gain and the other is unrealized gain. So unrealized gain is something that we have created only invoices. So that we call unrealized gain. So maybe gain or loss, whatever. And then we have realized gain. Realized gain is something after we receive the amount or create the receipt application. So that we call realized gain. So we are giving the realized gain account, gain or loss. And then we have uh, the, the cross currency rate type. So as a default, uh, I have selected the uh, corporate. So if we wanted to use different uh, types, we can use it always. So if you see here, we have defined it. And apart from that, if we wanted to use the user specific, we can enter it and we can do this. And apart from that, as a standard uh, thing, we have the corporate. So corporate where we will define uh, the rate against uh, each currency. Based on that, our uh, system will calculate the conversion. And then we have a uh, cross currency rounding up that, that is again the, the, the precision limit. Uh, if we have it, the difference will be calculated here in the cross currency rounding account. So this will basically round off uh, the, the, the currency values. Okay. And then we have the automatic uh, reset. Uh, so this is what I was explaining on the above setup, which we are trying to do. So that is lock bots. So if we wanted to create the receipts automatically, so how do we want it to do? So whether uh, we want, so uh, as a default, I have given one, uh, I mean, for both the invoice and receipt. If we wanted to commit uh, more than one, we can uh, give it. So that depends on our performance as well. So we have to make sure that uh, how are we uh, deciding on our infrastructure uh, setups also. So which is the RAM and the storage and all those things. So based on that, we can give the invoice per commit. Sir, so what's the threshold amount, sir? Yeah, Could you give an example? Okay. Okay. So, okay. so we have another thing called uh, receipt confirmation threshold amount. So we are now importing this particular receipt. So what is the limit for this uh, receipt that we wanted to import in a batch? So if we want to give a particular limit, then we can give it here the, uh, on the receipt confirmation threshold amount. So where up, up, above this uh, limit, we will not be able to do it. So this is again for the purpose of performance uh, tuning. Fine. Okay, then we have uh, bills receivable. So bills receivable is something, again, uh, this is uh, kind of an instrument where we will pay it at a later point of time. And uh, we, 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 this will follow kind of an uh, balance forwarding cycle. So so if we wanted to enable this, uh, I mean, basically I haven't seen a client using bills receivable. Uh, th this is used very rarely. <laughs> Uh, so, so I'm just explaining theoretically. So, what is bills receivable and why do we use this? So, if you wanted to use the bills receivable, we should enable it here, and then we will have to create a transaction source and the transaction type. So, where we will attach the transaction type to the transaction source, and that transaction source should be attached here. So, I will show you one uh, while we are creating the transaction type and the transaction source in the system. So, what are the different uh, methods? So, at high level, bills receivable is something like an, uh, the payment instrument where we can pay at a later point of time. Sir, this uh, auto cash rule set you told now. Yeah, yes. Sir, I give an example. You tell me, uh, okay. suppose if I have uh, five invoices. Okay. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल टू थाउजेंड इनवाइस नंबर वन इनवाइस नंबर टू थ्री थाउजेंड इनवाइस नंबर थ्री फोर थाउजेंड इनवाइस नंबर फोर वन थाउजेंड इनवाइस नंबर फाइव सिक्स थाउजेंड बट दे कस्टमर हैज नॉट मेंशन दे इनवाइसेस इनवाइसेस ही हैज पेड अराउंड टेन थाउजेंड ओके ही हैज नॉट मेंशन दे इनवाइस विच रूल शुड बी अप्लाइड सर no this is based on date so the invoice 1 2 3 what you are saying is let's say the invoice uh, one which you are referring is on the first of uh, january and uh, two is on maybe 10th of january then uh-huh. three is on uh, maybe 12th of january and then okay. subsequently 15 18 uh-huh. so for this kind of cases if let's say i am selecting clear uh, past use invoices so which means apply past due invoices first so system let's say his his total due is 1 lakh so he has given uh, 10000 so the 10000 which applies for the invoice number 1 which is okay. on the first of uh, january so system will apply only the one invoice that is uh, made on first of uh, january okay yeah fine Sir, so, uh, sorry, sir. Okay. Even if you, uh, uh, sorry, sir. Anna, Even if you select the oldest, uh, uh, sir, could you please, uh, yeah, the oldest transaction first. That yeah. also will do the same thing, no, sir. I mean, when you click on the, the purpose of clear past due invoices and the oldest transaction first, also, it, it's a yeah, it is mostly clear. similar. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, sir. This invoice match is there, no? Invoice match. Yeah. Yes. Invoice here. match means here, yes, sir. In the this auto cash rules. Yeah. Invoice match. Yeah, invoice match. Yeah, yes. If sir. the customer has informed the invoice number, accord accordingly, it it is match or not by number, it is by date only. Huh? No, they. I mean, the, this is against uh, we, this option. We can say directly on a particular invoice. so we okay. don't need to mention uh, this particular date or this particular number see i have uh, created and i have already ten invoices pending since okay. then but today oh. i'm making an invoice so customer comes and says that uh, whatever i'm purchasing today i'll pay it to you maybe uh, in another one week i'll pay you the remaining amount so what we will do is that we will use this option and uh, we will match as okay. on uh, today so only two days invoice will be cleared so that that is what uh, we are saying in this option so this is always against a particular invoice but not on the past uh, due uh, uh, that is why uh, this only i am asking sir display match receipt to invoice correct now sir yes correct oh that is invoice to invoice matching yes correct okay okay yeah Uh, any other doubts? No sir. No sir. Shall we move? Yeah. Yes sir. Oh. Okay. So we have uh, created the system option. So the the next step setup is that uh, transaction type. okay so if you see here we have uh, the transaction type set this is nothing but our reference data set so this is what uh, i was referring that we can use or restrict this particular setup only for the given uh, rds or the reference data set okay and then we are attaching sorry no sorry sir i okay. i just said okay i'm so sorry i disturbed in between okay uh then we have the legal entity that we will assign to this particular uh, transaction type 
and then we will uh, just give a name for this transaction type i, I have uh, just given attribute transaction one and then we have uh, a transaction class so this is what i was referring when we are discussing about the bills receivable so what we will have to do is we will have to click this uh, bills receivable and we will have to give the respective accounts to this bills receivable and we will create a transaction source and attach there to allow us to do the bills receivable transaction so if you see here we have another uh, classification like debit memo credit memo and uh, charge back so we will uh, try to create uh, one credit memo maybe and uh, apart from that i'll just explain what it is and this thing so we, we have uh, options here so basically if we want to close this particular transaction time we can uh, click closed and we can save this particular transaction so that uh, it will become inactive and then we have uh, open so open is something it will be active and available to use for any kind of transaction and then we have uh, pending so pending is something we, we can create it and maybe want when we wanted to have it uh, used it then we will change the status to open and void is something for now we wanted to i mean restrict this particular transaction type maybe at the later point of time we will use it but always it is suggested to have it open and then the start date start date and the end date and we have the signs the sign is like the the amount which we enter should be in positive or negative so by mistake if uh, maybe we we give a positive and if you wanted to give a negative value system will not allow us to enter it since this uh, setup is been done for the positive value and if you wanted to system to allow any values we can give any sign so since this is invoice i'm just giving positive and we have a uh, generate bill so do we want to generate bill? It, it is like an uh, printed copy of it so do we wanted the uh, system to generate this or we wanted to restrict this particular functionality so i have given as yes excuse me then, arun sir yeah, yes sir this generate bill you told now yeah uh, can you give an example sir i can't able to understand generate uh, bill means what sir so it is nothing like uh, the if, if we create a particular bill in the system we will take a print out of it so print out of that uh? yeah okay yeah basically oracle as a standard uh, format where automatically the, the screen or the page will be printed out okay. without logos or anything J just a uh, form so if we wanted to customize this form again we can uh, customize this okay okay then we have uh, the credit memo type so credit for, to attach the credit memo here again we will have to create a transaction with uh, the transaction uh, class as credit memo then we will have to attach it here with the credit memo type and then uh, we have uh, the application uh, rule set so the application rule set is something that how do we want to apply the receipt Uh, so we have uh, the line level we have uh, the line first and the tax after or we we wanted to apply pro rate so let me explain uh, each type <coughs> so if we chose line and uh, tax pro rate so let's say we have uh, one line or two line and then we have uh, tax maybe three lines so what system will do is that system will apply first uh, the line one and line two then for the three the tax line system will prorate prorate in the sense it will distribute equally so this is the option for the to to, to distribute the tax but uh, the line will not be distributed where it will apply first the line then the second option is line first and tax after so this will not prorate anything but it will apply the lines first so after that it will apply for the taxes and then we have uh, pro rate all pro rate all is something it will distribute to across all the lines so this is what application rules it 
So and which is the payment term that is usually selected, sir, in the real scenario? In real time scenario, it again depends on the business case scenario. See, if if we are taking, uh, let, let's say, a supermarket, so it will be always immediate. Let's say we are taking a manufacturing industry, so it will be at least a 30 days of uh, limit uh, because it will not be made immediately. Definitely, we will have a time limit. So it depends on the industry uh, we, we are working with. Uh, so mostly for a retail shop or a supermarket, we will have the immediate terms to be recognized. And uh, maybe for the project or the construction or the manufacturing industry, we will have uh, the payment terms or uh, specifically depend for it. So mostly in, as an industry practice, we will use 30 days net. And in the application rule set, sir, which uh, which is the one that usually people, I mean, uh, so in application select. rule set, uh, as a thing, we will use uh, this one, line first and tax after. Tax after. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, in case of payment terms. Yeah. Uh, uh, see, in, in case my uh, if I want to give a customer a, uh, seven days credit, okay, okay. if it is, if he is a local customer. Okay. And if it is an outstation, I, if I, I want to give it uh, 21 days, okay. like that I can make it, no? Yeah, you can make any days. Yeah, that we can make. Uh, we, we can add in the payment terms, sir. Yeah, this yeah. is seeded, no? Yeah, these are all seeded. You can uh, see it here. This is common uh, set, set, actually. Set. We so can then, add, uh? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. We can add anything. Uh, we can add our own payment terms, sir. Yes, correct. We can add. This is similar to our uh, payable setups, what we were uh, doing okay, in okay. payable. So, where we can uh, define our uh, whether it should be recognized immediately or it should be recognized in 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, 90 days. Because if you see construction projects and uh, this kind of business, how it will work is that at least three months of uh, credit limit period will be there. So for those cases, we cannot use the same uh, common set that is net 30 or uh, so you can see it here 30, 60, 90. So this will apply. And if you if you have a special case where uh, customer use maybe 15 days, so that again you can define it. So that we can do it. In payment terms, we can define that. Payment terms, we will set it in the customer, no? Yeah, we can attach to a customer also, or if you wanted to attach to a particular transaction, we can do it. We can do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Suppose if I if I set the payment terms in the customer, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. uh, I can change it in the invoice, no? At the time of invoice. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, change in the sense if you have multiple, we can change it. So that is again on the business unit level access. Okay. So the payment term what we are creating is we we ah. create it and we attach the uh, reference data set. Okay, okay. And if this reference data set is attached to a business unit where we will ah. have the access, then we can change it. If you Achha. have multiple uh, the payment terms created for it, for the okay. business unit, we can change. Oh. Yeah, yes, we can change. Okay. So that okay. is al always allowed. We can change it. Okay. okay. So then we have uh, the open uh, receivables. So do we want to maintain the open receivable? Uh, the receivable is nothing but uh, the outstanding that customer owes to us. And then we have a uh, freight. If you wanted to allow freight, maybe we can enable this option so that we can uh, update the freight also in the line items. And then we have uh, post to GL. So this should be enabled uh, to allow us to post the particular invoice to the general ledger. And then uh, we have uh, the default or tax classification code. Uh, so default tax classification code will be applicable when we have the fusion tax uh, module implemented. So for most of the countries will use the tax uh, part, I mean the tax classification code. But also there are few countries where we will not use the taxation part. If you take uh, India and Singapore kind of countries where we will, and also the US, we will have uh, most of the tax action par taxation parts involved in it. So where we will use this default uh, classification code. 
or if you wanted to enable this at a customer level we can leave it here and we can enable at the uh, customer level and uh, there are also few countries like uh, middle east like saudi and uh, uae we, we don't have uh, much taxation so for those kind of countries we will not implement this uh, taxation so only thing is so recently they have implemented uh, the vat so that is yes, again uh, one one rate that we have across the transaction so that is you are telling gst no sir no this is not uh, gst so gst what we have is, is that uh, for india for india ah, okay yeah. Uh, but uh, the, this is for uh, UAE and uh, Saudi. Basically, I'm okay. speaking about the Middle East, where we don't have oh. taxation. India, we have a complex tax, actually. We have a lot of tax involved in it. Okay. Uh, but, but if you take UAE, they didn't have any taxation. Recently, they introduced this VAT. Okay. So that is, again, uh, between uh, the, the countries. I mean, between UAE and uh, between uh, the saudi and now they have extended to other countries as well so there are also few countries we don't have uh, taxation so uh, i'm speaking about those part okay and uh, we have natural application only natural application is something that how do we want to uh, uh, do our uh, what do you call the receipt application? Whether do we want to maintain our receipt application? So receipt application is nothing but applying our receipt against the invoices. So whether do we want to allow this or we don't want it to allow this? If we disable this option, you can see that allow over application. So over application is something that uh, let's say the invoice amount is hundred, and if we wanted to pay maybe receive maybe one fifty, that we can do it but generally we will not have it because we will go off the track that is if we want to take a reporting out of uh, the receipt and the invoices we will have some reconciliation issues so always it is suggested to have a natural application only so the moment you select this this option will be disabled okay and then we have uh, exclude from late charges calculation so do we want this particular transaction to be uh, excluded from the late charges? So what is late charges? So let's say the, the amount or the due for the particular uh, invoice is on 10th of January. And now it is 15th of January till uh, the customer hasn't uh, paid us. So we will charge uh, the, 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 the what you call kind of an interest. So that you call the late charges. So for that, we will uh, do a specific setup and uh, uh, we will attach it with the customer. So if we wanted to exclude this calculation for the late charges, so when we do uh, uh, or create an invoice with this transaction, if we enable this option, system will not calculate the late charges. Okay. So there will be only few cases where the customer will charge for the, I mean, the late payment. So mostly it, it will be exclude option. So for now, I'm not uh, touching this part. And uh, no future data with chronological document sequencing. So future dates with future date, we cannot use the chronological order. So which means document sequencing, we will define it at uh, call the sequencing level. So if we wanted to use at a future date, if we enable this option, system will not allow us to do on the future date uh, document sequencing. Okay. That is, uh, to my understanding, suppose uh, uh, suppose I am uh, uh, fixing the document sequence number for this financial year 2020-21. Yeah. Then uh, I can change it uh, for 2021-22. Some different uh, document sequencing, correct? No, sir. Yeah, this will restrict uh, to use, so uh, I mean, not to use the future dates basically. Okay. Yeah. Now, the example which I have given is uh, uh, correct or not? Yeah, yes, yes, correct. To my understanding, okay.
and then we have context value and uh, the regional information so this is basically uh what you call the country specific or localization where we will capture the additional information so that is again uh, client specific or the requirement specific so far now i'm not uh, using any additional information and uh, i'm coming to the the access to the particular view so we we have created the setup here so how do we know that the how, how do we let the system know that this transaction will be enabled for this particular raw business unit we have enabled at the legal entity level but still if we wanted to use this we, we still have to give the access to the particular bu so i have given the access to bu and then i have the receivable account and the revenue account okay so this is mandatory because when we are creating an invoice so these are the two accounts that will get reflected and apart from that if we have taxation involved in it so we will give the tax account as well so if we have a uh, freight so that also we can give where we will allow the flight right and then uh, we will attach the respective accounts here and then here you can see that there are two other accounts one is unearned revenue and the other is unbilled rece receivables so what is unearned revenue and what is unbilled receivable so unearned revenue is something that uh, we have uh, <coughs> so we, we have delivered our goods to the customer but we are yet to receive it okay so this kind of uh, this kind of transactions you can call unearned revenue so for example we can take this netflix so where netflix we are paying <coughs> for one year but whereas if netflix wants to capture uh, the revenue that it uh, incurred uh, it, it will not capture for one year as a one entry but whereas it will split into different uh, revenues uh, let's say the amount is thousand and uh, it is for the, maybe twelve thousand and the netflix will capture this as a thousand for each month so this we will capture as an unearned revenue and the end of the period we will knock off this unearned revenue with the revenue okay and similarly we have unbilled receivables so unbilled receivable is something where uh, so this we call basically advance or arrear if it is on arrear so basically there are two kinds so you can say both are similar but whether we are uh, invoicing at before beginning or before delivering the goods or after delivering the goods unearned revenue is when we, we, we basically generate the revenue and uh, serve it and unbilled is something we receive it and then maybe we will uh, serve or deliver the goods so that is the basic difference between uh, the unearned revenue and unbilled receivables okay and then we have auto invoice clearing okay and then we have auto invoice clearing so auto invoice clearing account will be required when we have the invoice that has been uh, imported from different module or uh, different uh, system or the third party application if we are receiving it <clears throat> let's say there, there is an uh, telecom industry where they have a uh, different application uh, so <clears throat> okay let's take this airtel as an uh, use case so airtel basically if you see <clears throat> when we are making this particular uh, recharge so this will be stored in one uh, system whereas oracle is different from this particular system okay so this invoice what we have uh, created as a recharge should be transported or should be sent to the oracle in order to get the financial report so uh, build it so for that what we will do is we will have a schedule process which will be scheduled for each maybe two hour or five hours so that the invoice will be imported so how system will understand that this is the account that uh, system should consider while creating in creating the invoice so for that purpose we will have the auto invoice clearing account since we are not we, we don't have any third party or we cannot test with the third party i'm not uh, using this account 
but I'm just explaining. So why do we need this account or where will we use this account? Fine. Uh, any doubts or shall we move? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So we are done with the transaction type. So the next setup that we have is the uh, transaction source. Okay, so this is uh, so this is like uh, uh, how do we want to create our transaction or how system wants to import or process the manual transaction. So if you see here, again we have enabled uh, the RDS and we have what is the legal entity and we have just given a uh, naming convention for this and here if you see this is manual. So with this transaction type, we will not be able to import any transaction from the third party application. So while we are seeing this Airtel uh, use case where uh, we will import the invoices from <coughs> the, the, the core application that is where uh, the recharges are made. So if those kind of transactions to be imported, we cannot use this manual. Okay. So manual is something that uh, we create uh, 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 as a human effort, we create the transaction inside the receivable application without any automation or anything. Okay, so we have the manual uh, option selected and uh, we, we have in from the system or from uh, so and so date, this will be active. And here again, we have uh, two options, whether uh, to use the automatic transaction numbering or we can use our own account uh, for the transactions. And here we have a receipt handling for credit. So what is receipt handling for uh, credit? So this is something that if we get a return or something from the customer, so how do we want it to maintain it? Whether we want it to handle it on account or refund. So what is the difference between on account and refund? So refund is something we will pay back the customer. And on account is something we will hold this particular amount. If we wanted to, if we want, if we, if the particular customer wanted to use this money for the future purpose, customer can use this. A simple example is maybe you you will you might have used this big basket. So in big basket, if if you purchase uh, let's say ten items, so we have built it. And uh, after uh, coming to this, maybe we return uh, maybe two items. So Big Basket will not refund us immediately. So this amount will be stored in wallet. So this we call on account. So whenever we are making the purchase, this will be deducted or used against the purchase. And the remaining amount will be calculated and we will pay the remaining amount. So this is the difference between on account and refund. Okay, and we have copy document number to transaction number. So if you wanted to copy a particular, I mean this transaction number to the document number or the credit memo if you wanted to create, do we want to copy this number? So I'm just click, clicking no. If we wanted to use, we can use it actually. So then we have uh, the allow duplication transaction number. This is always, you know, because we don't want to use any duplication number for the audit purpose. And then we have copy transaction information, uh, black field to credit memo. So in case we wanted to capture the additional information, let's say we, we wanted to ca capture even the product information. So we will use this DFF. DFF is something like uh, uh, descriptive let field or the additional information that we wanted to capture. So after setting up this let field, we will uh, enable or we will give a particular values to the system and we will use it while doing the transaction. So if we enable this option, this additional information, what we are entering in the transaction will be copied to the credit memo that we are creating against this transaction. 
Okay. So for now, so for now I'm just uh, disabling this option. I don't want to copy this. And then we have reference field default uh, value. So this is again, uh, if we wanted to import uh, the transaction, then maybe we, we will use. Since this is manual, I'm not using this option. And as I said earlier, I have I have created the transaction type and I am attaching this particular transaction type with the transaction source. So that when I try to query this particular transaction source, system will automatically pick or populate the transaction type. And if you wanted to attach the, 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 the credit or transaction source, so this is for our what you call uh, the normal invoice. If we have a specific uh, to the credit memo, we can attach it here. So that whenever we have the return, system will automatically process it. Okay. So this is for manual. So I will just show you how it will look like for an uh, imported uh, transaction source as well. Anyway, we will not be able to use it since we don't have third party system, but still I will show you how setup needs to be done. So I click imported. So the moment I click imported, all the values will be changed or the additional information will be added up here. So if you see here, the, the rest of the things are uh, similar. So I, I just say, uh, sorry, here we should enable this option because we are importing it. So we want a system to generate the transaction numbers automatically. And uh, we have seen this options. And then we have the auto invoice options. So let's say we, we receive 10, 10 lines for an invoice. So against this 10 lines, there are two lines the, which doesn't have a proper maybe revenue account. So revenue account is missing for this particular uh, line, these two lines. So whether do we want to reject the entire invoices or do we want to create the invoice with the eight lines which has the valid record. So always it is suggested to have reje reject invoice. So that we will, we can reprocess it again. Or, or else, what, what system will do is that the rest of the two lines will be created as a separate invoice. So that, that is why always we will use reject invoice. Okay. Then we have grouping rule. So grouping rule is something that how do we want to group this particular invoice? So when we are speaking about uh, the auto invoice, where we have two parts. So one is line ordering and the other is grouping. So line ordering is something, how do we want to make the particular sales order into lines? And once we have created this as an lines, how do we want to create or group this as a particular invoice? So that we will mention it here, okay? So once we have attached the grouping rule, and if you wanted to have a clearing account or the intermediate, so that we can enable it here. And then we have uh, sales credit, uh, so that depends. So if we have sales credit, maybe we can use the sale, allow sales credit. And then we have accounting date in closed period. So if the period is not open, so do we want to adjust or do we want to reject? Again, this should be a validation. So it is always reject. Then we have uh, import information. Import information is something we have uh, sales credit Sales credit is completely dependent on our uh, the, the sales relevant information. If you see here, it is sales person, sales credit type, and uh, sales credit amount or person. So it is always suggested to use the IDs. So why do we want to use the IDs instead of values? So values will contain either character or it will be numerical or uh, maybe with uh, along with may, maybe the always numerical or character, whichever values. So this will not be unique value. So if you take the characters or the numbers, it will not be unique value. So we might get a uh, validation so sometimes. So always it is suggested to have uh, ID. So ID will be always primary key so that it will be unique. Okay. 
similarly we have the customer uh, build, build to customer and uh, build to address all, all those things so it is suggested to have ids for everything for the purpose of uh, the performance tuning or to avoid the validations okay so here we have uh, build to customer and uh, we have ship to customer so there will be few cases where uh, the shipping location will be different from the billing location so billing will might have happened in uh, maybe the office or uh, the head office but ship to location might happen at uh, maybe the inventory office or the sub inventory offices okay so most of the cases bill to location will be different from the ship to customer okay then we have uh, the, the address address is something that again says bill to what is the address that we are using maybe if we have contact we can use it similarly you know, address and contact and then we have sold to customer sold to customer is something that uh, we have this customer i mean mostly this sold to customer will be same on few cases if the sold to customer is different from the ordering then we will mention it sold to customer is different from the bill to or uh, ship to customer so the payment will be made by the sold to customer again here we will use id and we have uh, payment method rule payment method rule is something that how do we want to pick the payment method so that again we will use this id okay then uh, customer uh, bank account so why do we need a uh, customer uh, bank account so customer bank account is something that uh, will applicable for the online transaction like NEFT, RTGS, Google Pay, Paytm and all those kind of uh, payment transaction. We will need customer bank account to process this. Okay. So again, this we will use as an ID. Then we have invoicing group. So invoicing rule again uh, while we are discussing about the unearned revenue and the unbuilt uh, receivables we were speaking about uh, invoice in advance and invoice in arrears so what is invoice in advance and what is invoice in arrears so invoice in advance is something that uh, we will uh, bill it and then uh, we, we, we will uh, deliver it and uh, in, invoice in arrears is something uh, we will deliver it and we will invoice it so that is the simple differentiation between both okay so that again we will give it an id and then we have accounting uh, flex field so flex field is nothing but attaching our flex field to derive the date and uh, our uh, what you call the core combination of the receivables and the revenue account okay and then we have a payment term. Payment term, uh, that is what we were saying, whether it is immediate or 30 days net. And then we have the revenue account allocation. So if we wanted to distribute the revenue that we are importing from the third party application, so that we can have as a percentage or the amount. So most, mostly it will be percent. Then we have the miscellaneous information like transaction type and uh, the memo. So the, what is memo line? So memo line is something where we don't have a, a, a particular item or the inventory item given for this uh, inventory unit. So if we wanted to use without the inventory item, we will define a standard memo line. And we can use this memo line against uh, this particular line or the transaction. So that we will see when we are uh, creating the invoice and uh, inventory item that we can give uh, that, that is understandable so that we will give id and unit of measure quantity or whichever uh, the unit of measure we wanted to use and FRB is freight and both so that is again understandable and uh, freight carrier and related document if we have something okay so again cpq cloud integration is related to this one i mean this involves the technical part of it uh, so basically for the sales and marketing uh, related modules, we will use this option. Okay. And then we have uh, revenue management cloud service uh, integration. So again, we have a module called uh, revenue management uh, specifically, separately designed for this uh, revenue management. So that if you wanted to integrate with our this module, we can use this. So where we can use the 
source uh, document type okay so this is for imported so we have seen uh, the transaction type transaction source now we will see memo line memo line is nothing but uh, the standard memo line what uh, we, we were uh, discussing just now sir one thing sir I mean, uh, arun sir yeah uh, in order management they create invoice no no they create order billing no no order management we will create sales order ah billing where, where it get created so billing will be done in uh, ar module accounts receivable see one thing sir in uh, see the, the one customer places the order okay, okay. Uh, then it gets shipped uh, bill uh, delivered uh, okay. delivery take place in which uh, the thing order management no shipping the shipping will happen in order management okay then the billing will happen in billing uh, accounts receivable accounts receivable see one thing a uh, small confusion i have yeah. see uh, for example in india you take for example okay. uh, in india for example it is a pharmaceutical company wherein okay. uh, head office is in one location okay okay what they will do uh, the, the order will be received in the distribution department okay okay, okay. okay they will create a sale order as per uh, order management they will create a, in order management they create a sale order and okay. also they do delivery uh, or they will create a sale order in the distribution department and that sale order will be given to the uh, warehouse people uh, yeah. where they will create a shipment delivery uh, in that correct no yes. sir yes okay then invoice uh, who will generate in that case so after uh, creating this or uh, maybe before this if we wanted to uh, maybe sh ship this particular item what we will do is based on the sales order hmm. we will import the sales order or with the reference of the sales order we will create the invoice in accounts hmm. receivable module accounts okay. receivable module who will do it uh, that uh, uh, that warehouse people will generate or who will generate that no no this will be on a respective uh, head office or this thing where the invoice will be created so this will not be created by the warehouse uh, admin or the warehouse uh, the uh, or, uh, okay no no uh, my question is uh, when we assign to that uh, role to the uh, warehouse people they will create invoice no if we assign the role warehouse executive can create the invoice but uh, practically we will not have the scenario uh, where where as people will create the invoice and attach it with it so it will it will be different department action so, so no no uh, one example i am uh, sorry to interrupt you to more yeah. give a clarity see you heard a company called uh, glasgow smith line pharmacy limited no okay okay see one simple one thing i will tell you uh, actually they it's a the red office is in mumbai okay okay they have a, a warehouse uh, in uh, uh, bhiwandi okay, okay. mother warehouse okay. okay and manufacturing location is in nasik okay okay so they uh, products get manufactured that is uh, medicines get manufactured okay 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 then it will get uh, it will be transferred to bhiwandi mother warehouse okay okay from there uh, it will get distributed to cfa location they have mm -hmm. 28 locations across mm -hmm. india mm -hmm. okay okay they will uh, through a delivery not a stock transfer they will do it and they will mm -hmm. okay this cfas what they will do mm -hmm. they will uh, uh, receive the stock okay okay then they will uh, uh, once uh, the distributor places order they will create a sale order and do shipment and uh, they will create invoice uh, only the accounting part Uh, that uh, revenue this uh, will uh, will be done by the this thing automatically it will create back end uh, accounting in uh, entries will get created mm -hmm. so uh, then receipt also uh, they they will post to receipt whenever they check received they will post that okay that and all they will do it okay. that is why i am asking in that case 
that role will get uh, can be assigned to them or uh, like that yeah yeah that's what i'm saying we don't uh -huh. have any restriction that uh, in 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 oracle we don't have any restriction that their executive cannot create this uh, invoice okay sir i'm saying okay. as a standard practice i have seen people uh, assigned specifically to create this invoice but where of executive role will end up in managing the items so okay. it is Then not a restrictive create... we can assign this role particular huh. role i mean the account uh, receivable specialist or the manager okay. to the warehouse planner and uh, warehouse planner can create the invoice so that is possible okay. Okay. so that depends on the business case so ah, if business wants okay. to have it they can have it there is no restriction Okay, okay, sir. As all these modules are integrated, it automatically, uh, you know, will inform the person who has been assigned in the accounts receivable, right? So then they will create the invoice there, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So uh, yeah, no, I mean, no, the the business case. What he's saying is that uh, we don't have a specific person to create an invoice. So warehouse planner will create this invoice. Is what. Saying. because they want to dispatch you know that the invoice should go to the customer with the e-way bill so uh, depending on another person it's not difficult it's very difficult so what they will do oh. they will create an uh, invoice generate an invoice uh, accordingly e-way bill will uh, they will do it and attach it and they will uh, dispatch the stock no no that's what i'm saying that depends oh. on the business case Okay. See, you, if you take art well again even there you have the automating uh, the email email okay okay so we have workflows and this thing so that is the technical part of it since we okay. can uh, i'm just explaining how it will work so basically okay. we have uh, the the request will once we create this particular transaction or the sales order in our uh, what do you call uh, the, uh, the the order management so basically system will give an alert or to the particular department through this workflow generator that okay. so and so order has been created and we will see those invoices should be created so okay. that is why we have the auto invoice progress on all those things so invoice will be created automatically and if you wanted to give this particular option or after creating the invoice if you wanted to send this copy to particular person again you can send it Sir, one more thing. Uh, one more thing uh, uh, to add on this. See, once the shipment uh, they create a shipment, automatically invoice will get generated. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That is that is uh, you are telling now. Once yeah, the shipment yes. takes place, automatically invoice get, uh, in yeah. the system uh, invoice get generated. Okay. Manual yeah. invoice uh, not required. Automatically it will get. Okay. Yeah. Automatic in the sense we have a concurrent program to create this called an auto invoice. Ah, okay. Basically, create an invoice. So that is what I was referring to. Where we have after creating this invoice, if we wanted to send to a particular uh, maybe warehouse executive, we can have the email thing notified where this copy will be sent to this particular executive and he can process it. So okay. this is in Arthur. So if you see in Fusion, you have the notification already in place. Oh, okay. So okay. based on the customizing the roles. This particular executive can access and they take the printout of it, and we, he can attach along with the item and he can send. So, uh, so okay. that's what I'm saying. If business have the resource or already they are practicing that uh, they wanted to have a particular, uh, I mean, this resource will be allocated for this particular process, and uh, maybe this particular warehouse planner will work only on the item related uh, activities. We have the options to enable it. We, okay. we don't have this. But business okay. wants to have only for a specific uh, resource. We wanted to attach both the AR functionalities and the order management functionalities. We can enable. Oh, but okay. as a standard practice, we will not use it because those are two different departments. Okay. 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 Yeah. So that is what I was uh, trying to say. Where. The department is different. When the department is different, we will have to give the different uh, menus or the offerings uh, to to the respective resources. Okay. 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 Sir. Okay. Okay. Because uh, uh, why I'm uh, see I since I'm working in uh, pharmaceutical, where mm -hmm. SAP is there, 
ओके दैट्स व्हाई एक्चुअली आई वांट टू हैव अ क्लैरिटी ओके या 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 अंडरस्टूड सो सो बेसिकली that depends on the business scenario so we okay. don't have any restrictions to have only for uh, what you call uh, only for uh, this particular thing should be divided into two parts and this thing we, we don't have any such restriction okay. we can have it but okay. as a business uh, decision okay we will not have this option to have okay. uh, both ar and order management handled by one resource okay yeah uh, any other doubt no sir no. and uh, one more thing uh, yeah. pro before going this uh, yeah. see if, uh, suppose uh, one scenario uh, wherein uh, uh, what they will tell is uh, suppose if you pay uh, within before the due date suppose uh, if the customer uh, due date is 20th yeah okay. 10% discount something like uh, that suppose if you before the due date if you pay certain uh, discount is applicable for you like that yeah e, uh, that also option is there no sir yeah yes yes so so if you remember our payable session mm-hmm. so okay. we are saying uh, to the, i mean three parts for uh, payment term so for payment term we can okay so maybe let, let me okay. try to get it I'll, i'll show that sir am i may deviating the class no 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 not deviation no sir it's a, it's no 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 not actually. deviation <laughs> no no you are going in a flow am i deviating sir no no i learn deviation okay so if you see here we can define a payment term we are attaching our uh, rds and uh, you can see here uh, the discount uh, basis so how do we want to give the discount so do we want to apply this particular discount at uh, maybe total invoice or only lines or lines along with the tax and freight how do we want to apply so this option we can do it okay and apart from that we have the receipt application so this is nothing but our uh, discount will be applied on which date basis so either it is on the receipt application date or receipt date or deposit date so we say receipt application date okay so apart from that so what we have is that uh, the the payment schedule so we say this is uh, 100 and 30 days is the limit okay and here we say we are giving the discount of uh, 2% if it is paid on 20 days okay so if we pay below this days uh, so this again depends on the business case so if they have the discounts to be given on a particular given day then maybe we will give the actual days it here and we will give uh, the, the days to get the discounted here so if we want to add additional row and that is on the second level or third level always we can add we can have variable discount sir yeah slab so, yeah yes we we can have different slabs for this okay 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 clear
okay so what is uh, standard memo line and uh, why do we need uh, basically the memo line so we have uh, a, the the what you call uh, the receivable module to create the transaction so how do we create the transaction so we will create the transaction based on the item so why do we create based on the item or the service okay so why do we create this so we will do or we will create a sales order so against the sales order we will create a shipment and upon the shipment we will create the invoice okay so when we create a sales order we will create always with the item so that item will be interfaced with our receivable module and we will create the invoice against it so there will be a few cases where we will we will create non inventory items so how do we create it so that is where we have uh, the standard memo line where we can create the uh, ar invoices without having the items okay so when we are saying without having the items so how does the system understands that uh, this is the account code combinations that i have to create, generate for this particular uh, non inventory item line so this is how system understands we have given now uh, the business unit and we have the revenue account so basically the receivable account will be picked up from the transaction type that we have defined it there and uh, apart from that we are giving the revenue okay so for example i have given lease or rent revenue so if you wanted to have it then maybe we can have because revenue least revenue least uh, rent revenue and then we cannot capture this as an uh, item okay so what we have done is we have created a standard memo line and we have created it so here if you see again we will have invoice in advance or arrears this is for non inventory items so uh... yeah non inventory item okay, okay. okay so this is optional step i mean having the standard memo line is always optional so this is not a mandatory one okay and then we have receivable activities so what is receivable activities so receivable activity is something that if we wanted to have any sort of adjustment or uh, maybe if we wanted to capture uh, the refund for everything we will have to create a receivable activity so we will see what are the list we have to create uh, the receivable activity okay so if you see we have our adjustment and if you wanted to capture the bank error we have the activity to be created and we have uh, the bills receivable refund recovery so bills uh, receivable we were seeing well we are seeing the system options that uh, that is an uh, payment instrument that we will use so in case we have a uh, fund recovery for that uh, bills receivable we can use this and we have a uh, credit card uh, charge back and a refund for, for everything i mean earned discount or unearned discount and we have late charges and uh, miscellaneous cash so where do we use uh, miscellaneous cash so if we if we are creating a receipt application so basically we have two two kind of transaction one is standard and the other one is miscellaneous cash so when we match this particular receipt with the invoice and other things so that we call as a standard receipt application so we don't have any invoice or we don't have anything to apply with it so what we can do is we can simply create an miscellaneous cash transaction and we can record the revenue okay similarly we have for the payment prepayment and uh, receipt write off write off we were seeing while uh, we were seeing the initial system option setups similarly refund and uh, short term debts if we want to use it and then we have unearned uh, discounts so for everything we should uh, create uh, this so as a default setup uh, i mean to enable us to give give our complete setup we will need earn discount and unearned discount so let me show what we have created
Okay. So I have uh, created just a few receivable activities. So here, if you see unearned uh, discount, so this is mandatory. So I have uh, created one unearned discount. So let me show you what I have did. Okay, so we have uh, just selected the business unit to give the access and then we have just given a name for it and we have selected activity type as an and discount so this is important so for what activity we are uh, creating this receivable activity okay so we have created it and then uh, <coughs> here we have two options either to select based on the activity for the gl code or if we want to select the revenue on the invoice that we can select or if you want to select based on the tax rate code that we can select but as a standard practice we are using activity gl account okay so here we have selected a particular account so we have selected and discount here and then we have the tax rate code uh, source so you so th there will be a few countries where it will be taxed for each uh, transaction or the each activity the adjustments or the end discount whichever we are making so if we have uh, may, may, maybe the taxation part so that we will have to give the respective tax rate code that we will create in fusion tax application so since we don't want to use this taxation part i'm just clicking none okay so that's it we, we we have saved this transaction so this is what we call the receivable activity so receivable activity should be created for the multiple purpose like the adjustments and uh, the miscellaneous cash and the write-offs and all those things so we have created a uh, few cases okay so we have created uh, the earned discount and unearned discounts and now let's create a bank bank uh, we, we we have seen how to create bank while we are uh, creating the payable module so we will uh, just see once again so i have created it already sir um, uh, in that uh, you just uh, disabled the taxation uh, part no? i mean you said that you'll be explaining that in the taxation uh, module mm -hmm. so once you uh, enable all that will all these reflect in the receivables and payables and all that yeah, the, yes, the, it, it will reflect Okay, okay as it's integrated with everything yeah right okay okay thank you yeah. okay so I'll, I'll just show what we created last week basically So this is the bank that we created uh, last week that is uh, we selected the country and we select i mean we created the bank so if you want to add the address and if you want to add uh, the contact details so that we can click edit and we can add the details and against this bank we will have the branch so we can just uh, query our bank and we can click view branches okay so if we have uh, maybe multiple branches for this bank we can create it maybe if we have multiple uh, accounts have it with this bank we can attach it here so again we have uh, just uh, selected the bank that we have created and we have given the branch uh, name and uh, we have the routing number so routing Good. number routing is number is a fifth, fifth code like that sir yeah this is specific to us basically we don't okay. have it uh, for india cases okay yeah and apart from that all those things are uh, eft and uh, eda is like uh, our uh, how, do, how do how do we connect with our bank for in in case of electronic transfers okay so since we can't test the electronic transfers and all we, we, we didn't touch this part and uh, similar to bank if you want to give address and contacts we can uh, edit and we can give it here and uh, then we have uh, the accounts we go to manage bank accounts
Okay. So we have selected the bank and uh, we have given the account name and we have given the account number. So all are just dummy, but still for understanding purpose, we have just given this and we have given the access to particular LE. Okay. And here, if you see, we have enabled it for uh, payables and receivables. Okay. So this is one kind of an uh, application level access. And then we have uh, the cash and cash clearing. So why do we need uh, both the cash and cash, cash clearing is that uh, since this involves the bank. So that is third party. So we will need the clearing account so that we, it, it will help us in terms of uh, the, the reconciliation between our cash book and bank book. Okay, so the, this is the purpose of having the cash clearing. So when we make uh, the payment or receive uh, the, the amount from the customer, the cash clearing account will uh, hit there. So when we, when we get the actual cash, the cash account will reflect there. Then we have the additional information. So these things, if we want to maintain, then we can have it. So if you are making uh, maybe the foreign currency transactions, then we will have to enable this multi-currency account. Okay. And then we have the netting account. So netting account is something that uh, uh, if we have the same customer defined or payables and receivables, where we can use this netting account where the the excess or the excess amount can be paid out of it so that is what we call the netting account okay then we have the payment uh, document so the payment document is nothing but how do we want to generate our our the payment document numbers and all those things and if this is a uh, check based uh, this thing always we can define the check so we here we can uh, make it maybe i will just show you once I go here, I edit this. I can add this and I can give the start number and date number. So this, this should be based on the R check number where we will have the start number and end number. Okay. So this is our uh, payment document. So we have uh, created this and then we have the controls. So control is for the bank reconciliation or uh, how do we maintain our uh, the Reconciliation, either it is automatic or the manual. Okay. So if you see here, if you wanted to give the tolerance and if you want to give the exchange rate type, this we can give it here. So let's handle it while we are creating the receipt in the application. Then we have uh, security. Security is something where if you wanted to use this for only a particular role or the user that we can enable it here. Yes. So I don't want to restrict at the user or role level, I just give as it is. I'm not enabling this option. Okay. Then we have a business unit access. So this is mandatory. Unless we give this business unit access, we will not be able to use this for the transaction or the invoice, either in payable or receivable. Okay, so this is what all about the bank account. So we have created the bank account. So the next step is to create the receipt class as the receipt method. So where was the access to, um, you gave the access to business unit, no? When you were setting yeah. up the, but where was the option to do that? Sir? I mean. To, to give access to the business unit. Yeah, the, yeah yes, sir. Yeah, just a minute. Yeah. So this is what business unit access. Yeah. Okay. So I click edit. So I'll just click add. Okay. Okay. And I will give the relevant business unit since we have already given the access for it. Okay. We will okay. not be able to select. So if we have, we can just okay. uh, get it from here. Okay. So got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the next step is to create receipt class or receipt method.
let me try to create uh, and I'll give a new one. So I'll try to explain. So we will, uh, so basically what is reset class and what is uh, reset method. So reset method will tell the system that what kind of method we are using to capture our reset application. So what is reset class? So reset class will basically define that how do we want to create our reset and how do we want to manage our remittance process and all those things and how does the system recognize that this is cleared from the bank end? okay so this is all about the reset class and reset method so now let's see how to define uh, the reset class and uh, the reset method so i say hwrec1 so what is this creation method so this creation method means how do we want to create the reset so whether reset should to be created manually or automatically are based on the bills receivable or bills receivable remittance okay so automatic is uh, something that where we receive the files and even the bills receivables and uh, the bills receivable remittance we receive files from the third party application and then we will pro process it and uh, based on the uh, automatic rule or the auto rule we will uh, create the reset application then based on the rule reset are, uh, are also applied uh, to the what you call uh, the invoice so we, we 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 don't have this third party application so i'm just clicking manual and then we have different options here so what is basically the no no remittance and what is uh, standard what is factor okay so no remittance so what is no remittance so no remittance is something that we we, we select directly so when do we use this no remittance so let's say we have we have a business of maybe the supermarket so in supermarket sales cannot be made uh, through banking system and these things there will be only few cases where uh, we, we will use this maybe card and all those things so far that we can use the standard but there are few cases where we will use the cash transaction so for cash, we don't have any third party involved in it. So we don't need uh, the factoring and uh, the standards. So what we will do is we will say no remittance. We don't need any remittance and directly. Directly means it will be cleared automatically. The moment we select the receipt, this will be saved automatically. Okay. So the, the next method, what we have is standard. So what is standard? So the moment I click standard, we have two options. One is by matching or by automatic clearing. So what is the difference between both? Okay. So matching is something that uh, if I give matching, I should match this particular uh, receipt with my bank statement. So the moment I clear this at the bank statement level, the transaction or the receipt status will be changed to clear automatically okay so this is one option what is the other option by automatic clearing so what is automatic clearing so we don't have any statements that is coming in from the bank or we maybe we haven't uh, implemented the cms or the cash management module full fledged so what we can do is we can have the automatic clearing so what is automatic clearing is that we have a concurrent program or the schedule process so where this will run and this will clear uh, the receipts automatically so based on the information or the inputs we get from the bank we will run this particular program or if you wanted to schedule it we can schedule it so that the particular transaction will be cleared automatically so always it will be suggested to have by matching okay so then we have uh, the receipt method so receipt method is nothing but we, we, we are just using the method uh, for uh, the reset. Okay, so here we have another option debit memo inherent uh, reset number. So let's say we have created the reset. Now, if you wanted to refund uh, this amount or if you wanted to cancel this particular reset, so how do we want to manage it? So whether we wanted to maintain this uh, receipt number along with the debit memo numbering system. If we 
so there are two options in uh, reset application so either we can use the standard reversal or the debit memo reversal so debit memo reversal will create a debit memo in the transaction so that the customer due will be knocked off okay so this is the difference so while creating the debit memo if we wanted to have the receipt uh, number inherent uh, with the debit memo that we can enable it here so we will just give it as an optional and we will add the remittance bank details so since we are saying the remittance method as a standard so we should give the relevant uh, bank details to this so i'm just giving the bank details of uh, maybe we have established what we have okay so here we have minimum uh, receipt amount so we can set up the minimum amount uh, to the transaction so this is again optional so i say just uh, one so clearing days if you want to set a uh, clearing days then uh, that we can uh, set up it here so we have risk elimination days so risk elimination days is something that where we have the factoring so if you if you see this from, from the list what we saw earlier so we have standard we have factoring so if we are using this factoring in this case so where we have the the risk elimination factors and all those come so why do we have this risk, risk elimination so factoring is something that uh, the customer hasn't given me the, the entire amount what is outstanding or what is there to be paid so with this receipt or the invoice what i have it in my hand i'll go to the bank and i'll get a part of amount from the bank okay so this we call factoring so when customer pays that then bank will get knocked up so this is not applicable for all the cases only few cases where bank will allow for a privileged customer so unless we have the 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 requirement from the customer we will not set up this factoring so risk elimination days and all those things comes in when we have uh, the factoring set up so when we have set up this uh, or call factoring we have two options so one is defining the risk elimination and the other is defining the short term debt uh, account okay if you see here this factoring is disabled the reason being is that we have selected the standard so if we have selected the factoring we will see this okay so this is the so give an example sir for the factoring uh, uh, like okay. with the amount and everything yeah okay so let's take and uh, case where uh, we we'll, let, let's take uh, hmm. maybe reliance industries we, we, let's take uh, reliance gas and uh, pipeline so where uh, i have uh, created uh, the invoicing to a particular uh, client in middle east and uh, i have sold a uh, few, few amount and uh, the due is on maybe let's take uh, 10th of august so today is 1st of august so i i don't have cash flow in my business so i i want at this immediately so what i will do i'll take this invoice what i have sent to my customer so the banks are, the banks are saying the bank what i used to transfer the amount or receive the amount is same uh, always so what i'll do i'll take this invoice to the bank and i'll submit this to the bank saying that so and so amount will be received on so and so date Uh, on 10th of august but between that i want to submit this this invoice to you and get the amount out of it so that you can get maybe at a later time or on the 10th of august okay so this is given on the basis of trust so this is so not this is basically you're taking credit of uh, how much ever yes. amount from the yes. bank okay yes okay. that is why form of sir it form of bill discounting so this is why we have uh, short term debt okay so the moment we 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 encash this with our invoice as a receipt so basically we will have the short term debt created so once we clear this so bank has uh, recognized it then this this will be knocked off with this particular uh, entry from uh, this cash clearing to cash okay so until then this will have only the effect of short term debt 
so th this is kind of taking a uh, kind of an credit from the bank by submitting our bills it's a uh, uh, way of bill discounting sir factoring and uh, not exactly bill discounting so bills discounting is different so this is like submitting our bills and uh, getting this we, we can say but not exactly like we can match with that like kind of and similar but we'll take uh, some amount now sir in that they will yeah. Uh, okay yeah some form of commission they will take no no uh, commission it will be there always <coughs> okay okay so when we have uh, the bank uh, transaction <coughs> okay okay always we will have a uh, commission part involved in it okay but, uh, this is different this is based on only the trust of uh, the particular customer because okay. if you see here it, it is not just uh, thousands or lakhs of money always okay. it will be more more than lakhs or maybe in some cases in crores okay okay so it is based on trust factor okay so so that is what so basically while we are dealing with the factoring so we will submit the bills and we will get the amount based on the trust so once we once the customer clears that banks will recognize that so this is what about factoring so if we have enabled this factoring we will see the short term debts and uh, the risk elimination and all those things So if you see this unearned uh, discount and uh, earned discount, so this is what we created uh, in <coughs> receivable activities.
Okay. Uh, so this is all about our reset class and uh, reset method. So the next setup is to create a reset source. So this is what we call reset source. So basically, why do we need a reset source? Is that uh, how do we create our reset? So this is kind of uh, the setup what we did for uh, the transaction. Similarly, we will create it for reset. So here we have uh, two kinds of creating the reset. After attaching the DO, we will select uh, whether it is manual or automatic. So if it is manual, we will create a reset class what we what we created earlier. Okay. So let me create one. I select our manual and I'm just giving the one which we created. So the standard practice uh, is to enable manual, is it, for uh, ma uh, receipt sources and as well as it for the transaction? Uh, yeah, it so? is uh, uh, mostly manual. There are there are very few cases that we will have automatic receipt uh, creation. So as a standard practice, it is manual. Okay. And uh, then we have uh, the batch numbering. So there are uh, two parts of it. So one is batch and the other one is uh, the individual receipt. So what we are seeing it here is for the batch numbering, not for the individual. So for uh, the batch, maybe if you want to set up uh, as an automatic, we can give uh, the number. So for starting from one, this will start uh, separating. Okay. So we have created this option. Let's save and close. So similarly, for automatic, if you wanted to create, we will uh, give the reset class, reset method, and this thing, and based on the available setup. Uh, the, so the system will uh, create the automatic reset. Okay, so that is the only difference uh, here. So we have created the manual. I mean, the reset uh, class and reset source setup is done. So the next setup is to create or assign the role uh, to the user. So I have already assigned uh, this two roles, account receivable specialist and account receivable manager. So the next step, uh, so we have seen how to assign this role in security control, we will assign to user. So we saw in uh, previous uh, two sessions, I'll just uh, navigate here and I just show it one. Security control. So on the security control, on the left side of uh, the page, I click users. So from here, I search the users. So this is phn dot phn. So I search for this, I'll click this, and I'll edit this, 
and uh, I'll uh, add the roles if I wanted to add. Since I have already added the two roles, so I'm not adding two. Okay. So I'm just uh, after adding the roles, we will click save and close. Since we haven't made any changes, this has been disabled. So I will just click cancel. Okay. So the roles are assigned. So the next step, I mean, the next step is to open the period. So I think period should be open. Let's uh, verify this as well. Okay, so this is in future entrable period. So while uh, seeing the GL module, we saw what is uh, future entrable period. So it is nothing but uh, just we can uh, create the accounting entry, but we will not be able to post the entries. So that is what we saw as a future entrable period. So since uh, we are on the 1st of August, uh, it is future entrable. So we will have to open the period. So let's open the open period for uh, both the GL and uh, uh, the AR since we will be posting few transactions to GL as well. Okay. So we have opened the periods. So now let's create customer. how do we create customer so since we have added the roles to the user so we should be able to see our receivables here in the guides in the dashboard so i'll click the uh, billing and on the sidebar we'll click create customer so what we will do we will uh, give the name of the customer and if you see account number will be generated automatically and uh, here we have the uh, account type uh, if you want to select whether it is an internal or external you can select and here we have the customer class customer class is something that uh, if you want to give specific classification to it we can give and uh, here we have account uh, address set so this is what i was saying we can use the common uh, reference data set but when we define it in the receivable module, we will have some sort of uh, restriction. So if you see it here, we will not be able to find the common uh, reference data set. If you see from A directly, it will go to D. So which means we cannot use common reference set here for the customer. So we will need uh, our own uh, reference data set. So that is why while we are implementing itself, we will have to define our own reference state uh, in order to have sort of security okay so after that what we will do we will uh, create the address address is nothing but our site so we will give the site name and we will give the address of the site and uh, we will add the address purpose so if you see the address purpose we will have two things as a mandate one is build to and the other is ship to Apart from that, if you want to add uh, the additional inputs that is uh, delivered to or uh, maybe sold to and uh, statements uh, to whom you, you have to send the statement and all those things, you can add. So as the mandatory, we will select uh, ship to and uh, build to. Okay. So let me take uh, the customer what uh, we have created. So I'll just uh, go here. So I'll go manage customers. Okay, so this is the customer that we have created. And uh, if you see here, we have uh, created the site. So what we saw is still this one, build to ship to. So as a mandatory step, we, we have assigned this build to and ship to. 
So once we create this option, we will have to give the access to our business unit. So unless we give the access to the business unit, we will not be able to access this. So what we have uh, given is that we have given business unit. So if you note down here, we have the account codes given here at uh, the customer level also. So how does this work? So how does system derive uh, the account codes uh, that, that should be picked when we are creating the transaction? So there are three levels where we can give uh, the, the accounts that uh, needs to be picked up uh, while creating the transaction. So we can give at the transaction type that uh, what we are creating or if you want to use it at the customer level, maybe for few customers, we will have different revenue to be generated. So for those purposes, we have uh, to give at the customer uh, site level. So that is uh, at this level, we will have to give the receivable revenue and uh, the relevant account details. Okay. Excuse me. Sir, excuse me. Yeah, yes. Sir, you are telling no the customer. Yeah. Uh, if he is a domestic customer and if he is an export customer, mm. then uh, we can assign the revenue as a do domestic uh, this thing and export like that. Two revenues we can separate separately. We can keep no. No, no, it's not uh, domestic or uh, I mean revenue. No, no. Not... See my my say uh, my this thing uh, to. Uh, go to no 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 okay 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 revenue is one okay yeah okay. revenue is one so that is one one okay i okay, was okay. trying to say so basically we will classify the customer as a domestic or international that we can do so okay, if you okay, see okay. here okay, okay we have the classification okay uh, So here we can classify, we can add okay. additional details as well, and we can say whether this is a domestic or this is an uh, overseas, other international. Okay. Yeah, that we can determine. Okay. So we will give uh, the relevant accounts and uh, we can manage it. So how do we automate uh, this? So we have an option called auto accounting. So what is auto accounting? So auto accounting is something when we are importing the transaction from uh, different uh, modules. So that is when the auto accounting becomes mandatory because system will not understand which account I should pick. So in order to uh, make system understand that uh, this is the account that system should pick, what we will do, so this will be applicable when we are doing this, uh, recall the, the invoice that will be created from a third party application. Okay, so we have created the customer. So let me show how this auto accounting works as well so that we will have even more uh, better understanding when we work in real time project on uh, different applications. So uh, let me take our uh, project. So this is the setup that we have to do if we wanted to have, uh, I mean, if we are importing the transaction from our third party and all those things. If we wanted to automate this process, we can do it from here. So what we will do is we will select our business unit.
think I think uh, uh, it has some uh, access issues. So I'll confirm on this part. Okay. So there is some technical issue with this uh, auto accounting definition. Okay. Okay, I'll uh, okay. communicate on this part. Okay. So we, we have uh, seen till uh, the customer creation. So what we will do now is that we will try to create a transaction. So the navigation uh, to create a transaction is uh, we will navigate to the home page and we will click uh, create transaction. Like your receivables, I go to billing and uh, from billing I click uh, sidebar and I click create transaction. Uh, I think uh, we haven't given access to this user. Let's uh, give the access. Let me take the user link and uh, let me get the roles and I'm sending the business link. Let me attach the specialist role as well. So we have created. So let's verify this one. Nothing. So we have assigned two roles.
Okay, there is uh, some access issue, I think. So uh, maybe we will wind up today. Tomorrow we will see. Maybe I plan for uh, fixed assets tomorrow. So along with that, we can uh, complete the AR part as well. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, Fine. sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Tomorrow, what? Uh, Ten o'clock, sir. Same time. Yeah, same time. Ten o'clock. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good day, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm.